Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one I want to talk about my two Stream Deck XLs and how I use them within DaVinci Resolve to edit. Now I have two Stream Decks which gives me 64 macro keys to customise. I've opted for two because the most important thing is just to keep everything simple and also keep it consistent. I know obviously you can have multiple sub menus with a Stream Deck and have a whole variety of layers but what I don't like to do when I'm editing is to be cycling through a whole bunch of different menus and digging through just to find the functionality that I need. What I really like to do when I'm working is just have them above me so I'm not moving my hands all the way around the desk. This keyboard is amazing, it has great functionality, but it is missing a few things and that's why I use the Stream Deck in conjunction with the keyboard. This Stream Deck basically fills any holes that I can't achieve just with keyboard shortcuts. This is the first page of the menus and then if I click this button here, it cycles into this profile and then clicking the button again just simply goes back to that original profile. On this arrow here on the left hand side, all this is doing is cycling in and giving me the ability to increase or decrease the screen brightness. Sometimes I like to edit with the blinds open, in which case I will increase the brightness of the Stream Deck but in a very dark room, this can get quite bright, and so it's really nice being able to drop the brightness down, and you can see here that's really dimmed them down. All right, so let's have a look at timeline navigation. This entire second page here is purely designed to help me navigate my tracks within the timeline. Let's take a look from left to right, and here I've got all of my auto track selectors. That's these buttons here down the left hand side of the timeline. I can quickly select all of my audio tracks, all of the video tracks or deselect them. You can see they're popping on and off. And then I have individual track functionality. So if I turn all of video and all of audio off, I can quickly turn on video three and audio two. What's really cool is if this is synced correctly with the timeline, you can see from the Stream Deck itself what is actually selected on and off. So if I turn video one and two off, it actually changes the icon. And I'll bring up the Stream Deck profile so you can see that clearer. So again, if I choose video one and video two, you can see here on the Stream Deck profile, it actually swaps to a grayed out version of that. So when I'm in the timeline, I don't always need to be looking at the timeline. I can actually look down here on the Stream Deck as to what tracks are disabled and enabled. One thing to keep in mind is if I turn them off manually with my mouse on the timeline, they don't translate over to the Stream Deck. So I've tried to force myself into the habit of never using auto track selectors outside of the Stream Deck presets. In the bottom left here, I have my multi-cam tools. So if we're in a timeline such as this one and we navigate to an interview where you've got two angles, what you can do really quickly is click this button here which brings up that multicam in the source monitor. I can cut between them using any of these tools. So this tool and this tool is next angle and prior angle so I can quickly just click next angle and that's going to swap over that angle within the timeline. I can also manually choose what angle I want if I've got more than two angles. So this is second one and if I'm at this point within my clip and I actually want to cut to the second angle, you can see here that that tool there actually makes a cut on that clip and then changes the angle. If I want to quickly go back and change this angle to angle two and this to angle one, you can see how quickly I can do that with all of these tools. If I want to go back to just standard editing, that's where this button here comes in and it simply switches back to source. So it's very quick to work. As I'm moving through the timeline, and I come across a multicam clip such as this one here. I choose source multicam. I can quickly change the camera angle, cycle through the angles if I want to do it like that, or make a cut. On the right hand side, I have disable and enable video tracks as well as lock tracks. So let's take the lock track for example. I can lock all of my audio tracks, or I can lock all of my video tracks, or I can do them all individually. So I can lock all of my video and audio tracks and just open up track one on both video and audio. We can also disable and enable video tracks and I use this all the time. So this button disables all the video tracks and now I can just peek at 
each individual track individually if I want to. So for example, if we go over here, you can see I've got three video layers. So what I can quickly do is disable all and just go one, two, three, and quickly see what all of those layers are. These four buttons here are moving my track destination up and down. So if you take a look on the left hand side, I can choose video one and it moves up that track destination. Same with the audio, I can move that down and up. This is super handy when pasting work from other timelines or bringing them in from the source monitor. If I've got a working timeline like this and I want to bring in a video clip without bringing in all of the associated audio, what you would do is bring in a source shot like this, choose an in and an out point, and then I could do what is called a overwrite edit. It puts it right there because the video track is on video one, and then you've got these five audio channels which it's brought in. So what I can do now is choose this button, which deselects all of my audio channels, and then I can choose video one and push that up to track four. And now when I choose the overwrite, it's dropping it in on the fourth track there. If I don't want that and I just want to put it on the third track, you can see I do the same thing. It will drop it on the third track. So essentially all this does is gives you control over navigating the timeline and working quickly throughout the timeline. Let's head back to the prior page. On the right hand side now I have all of these colored markers and these simply change the color of the clip. I've got these two clips selected in the timeline and you can see this simply just changes the color of that clip. This button down here resets the original color. It'll default back to blue being video and green being audio. You can change the default colors as well in the menu settings. The second line of colored markers is actually going ahead and selecting all of the clips with that corresponding color from the timeline. So for example, if you have structured all your colors correctly, purple might be all of the drone or aerial shots. So I can quickly select that and choose Command C and then just paste all of those shots. And very quickly, I've just selected all of the purple shots from the timeline. I could do the same with all of the yellow shots. Now this particular timeline isn't set up very well with all of those colored clip markers, but you can see the power of using those selection tools. Another tool that I have is all of these markers. Now these markers are special because they actually give that specific color marker to the timeline as well as give it a keyword that I've customized for all of these. I use this all the time when I'm breaking down interviews. I've got markers to give it a one star, a three star or a five star. You can see here as I chose one, it's given me a yellow marker and put an OK take within the keyword. If I choose green, it's going to say great take and then white is going to say gold dust. Purple here is just a simple editor note and then blue is a general note. This button here is a start sync option. What I like to do with some interviews is select that button if I know that that thought is going to be a great scene starter. Red is jeopardy which means this is a great piece of sync that is going to create relevant tension for the scene and then this is a great end sync option. So right there I have eight different markers and you can see if I go up to the edit index I can search for for example all of the general notes or I can search for all the gold dust which is all of this and as I build out a interview you'll be able to quickly isolate all of those different notes. I'll talk more about the logic of the markers in another video but that just gives you an idea of how it's working. If I bring up the actual Stream Deck profile you can see when I create these markers it's actually nine actions going on at once. So as I select that it's obviously going through creating the marker, cycling down to keyword, pasting in OK Take, going back to the name ready for me to write whatever I need to in that marker. A few other features down the bottom here, mark clip, mark selection and show duplicate frames. If I select all of these and just paste them in to the start of the timeline and choose this button, all of the duplicate clip frame markers are shown. Sometimes you're working in a timeline and you just don't want to see that because it starts to feel cluttered. So this button just simply turns them on and off. This button creates an in and out point around any clip under the playhead. 
And then if I select a group of clips, I can choose this button to span an in and out point across that selection, which is also really handy. All right, this button here again resets all of the clip colors back to original. I should also mention that these clip colors also work within the finder. So if I navigate to all of my music and select all my music, I can choose this color, for example, for my music. This is adjusting it in the media pool globally for all timelines, or you can go in and just tweak it within the timeline, and now this is a localized timeline clip color change. So if I change all of this to orange and choose this button, it will now default to whatever clip color has been assigned in the media pool. Sometimes when you're editing, you create markers in the source window. And this button here will just remove all the markers in the source window, which is really handy. This button next to it will remove markers in a timeline level. So that's the vast majority of functions that I use all the time. We've got this page, which is all of your track navigation, all of your markers and clip colors. And then I've just simply got a few extra shortcuts. So if we start at the top here, we have starting time code. And so this button, simply if I've just got it selected here in the media pool, I can choose this button to reset the time code down to zero. Show time code overlay is simply just this window here. Show time code toolbar is this time code toolbar above the viewer. These two buttons here just contain a preset group of text, such as this, which will just paste every time I want to paste it. So if I'm trying to rename this clip, for example, I can just choose this and it will automatically paste in whatever I have in the memory of that button, which is really handy if you're pasting the same thing over and over again. Audio scrubbing, pretty straightforward if I'm scrubbing through the timeline. Linked selection, now this is a cool shortcut. So this button simply just links whatever's under the playhead together and then advances forward one frame. So I can keep just pushing this button and it will link every clip that is next to it. There have been times where a whole timeline like this isn't linked at all, so it's obviously nice and easy just to go through and choose this button to link them all. Selection follows playhead is this button here, so as I move the playhead, you can see it's automatically selecting the video clip. Switch to timeline is a toggle that allows you to choose either the source monitor or the timeline after an edit. So I'm in the source monitor now, I've selected an in and out, and if I paste in using an insert, you can see that the selector has now gone back down to the timeline. But sometimes you want to retain the focus on the source monitor. So if I go back to the source, choose an in and an out, I'm going to toggle that switch to timeline. And now when I choose an insert, it's still got the source monitor selected. So now I can choose another in and an out point. And now if I want to drop back to the timeline, I can carry on now in the timeline. This subclip timeline is a great function. If I'm in an edit, a big edit like this, I'll choose an in and out point and then I'll choose this button here, which actually goes ahead and automatically makes a subclip, which is here now, of that selection from my last timeline. Subclip from timeline only is exactly the same, except when I choose it, all it does is create a subclip and holds this window so that I have the ability to put a custom name if I want to, before hitting enter and dropping it into the media pool. Subclip source is something I set up when I was doing another project. For example, I would try and subclip out a clip like this, choose subclip source, and it would automatically paste in the metadata that I want for my subclips. And then it would give me the ability to rename it. And when I hit create, it drops that subclip into the media pool and you can see it's absorbed those custom parameters. Backup timeline copy is simply as I'm editing and I want to duplicate the timeline, I'll just choose that and it drops a duplicate in up here in the media pool. So I can continue to edit without having to break my focus on the timeline. All right, the last one is one, three, and five. These are simply just pasting one, three, and five wherever I want to. I was customizing a lot of subclips in a different project, and as I was putting a custom name, I was able to quickly put either three, five, or one, and you can see that's pasting it into the name of the clip. And that was a way I could quickly search for one star, three star, 
in five stars. But as you can see, all of these functions are really powerful if you start to batch. That subclip from Timeline is actually 10 shortcuts put together, but with one click of a button, I can very easily create functions that you couldn't otherwise do with the likes of an editor keyboard. And that's the key with the Stream Deck. You really want to build it out for your use case. If you're in the timeline and you're finding yourself doing an action over and over again, it's probably a good idea to create a custom multi-action tool that allows you to click one button and do a variety of things. Okay, let's talk about installing the Stream Deck profiles and a few things to consider for your workflow. A couple of the shortcuts are designed for the Mac operating system. It's important to go over to your keyboard shortcuts and choose keyboard shortcuts here in the settings. You just want to make sure that mission control, show desktop, as well as move left and right as space. You want to make sure that these shortcuts are aligned to these keys here. So that means when you push up, it actually provides the function that mission control is trying to do. When you download the Stream Deck profile, you can either download the dual profile or a single profile. So in the menu here, you can see that I've got two, XL1 and XL2. And each of these Stream Decks obviously only have two pages of the entire preset. But if you only have one Stream Deck, then what you can do is download this DaVinci single preset, and that has five pages. So as I cycle through these, you're able to cycle through and have the full functionality of everything. If you want to install my keyboard shortcuts into your DaVinci Resolve, simply open up the keyboard customization, choose the three dot menu, and choose import preset. This will pre-route all of the shortcuts to match the Stream Deck profile from the get-go. Well, there you have it, guys. Hopefully that was helpful and gave you an insight into how I use Stream Deck for DaVinci Resolve. Just remember you can download the Stream Deck profile using the link in the video description below. There's also a link if you don't have a Stream Deck to buy one off Amazon. But apart from that, please also comment on this video, give it a like and subscribe if this has helped you. We can have a chat in the comments. See you in the next one, guys. Peace.